Hello everyone. Welcome to the next tutorial of hands-on series on graph neural networks. This tutorial is the part of course Graph Machine Learning Foundations and Applications offered by Department of Artificial Intelligence, IIT Kodakpur. So in this tutorial, we are going to talk about inductive versus constructive learning on graph neural network for node classification task. So I have organized this tutorial in this format. So we'll talk about a little bit uh, of inductive versus constructive learning. Then what kind of data we are going to use for both the cases. And we'll, because it has already been covered the theoretical part in the classes. So we'll talk about the difference between inductive and transductive learning in uh, very short and after that we will see like what kind of what models we are going to implement we will see the implementation of the models using the help of PyTorch geometric library and then we will see how do we train and evaluate those models and at the end we will visualize the results to understand the difference between the transductive and inductive learning from implementation point of view so let's start the tutorial so in this we will implement uh, of course uh, two most popular graph neural network architectures one is graph convolutional neural network which is uh, kind of works with a transductive setting and the uh, graph series, which is uh, basically uh, commonly used for the inductive setting so uh, in the first part we are going to use protein protein interaction data set which is a multi label node classification data set and okay so let's uh, let's understand the setup and data loading so first we are going to import a few uh, libraries for example we are going to use pytorch so we'll import that and from pytorch geometric we are going to import uh, gcn con and sage con so basically this is the uh, convolution layers of graph convolutional neural network model and the graph sage model and from the data loader we are going to import protein protein interaction data set and okay so this is for if the CUDA is available on your device so you can select the CUDA GPU or, or else it will run on the CPU so first we will load the protein protein interaction data set so it's uh, we are going to use train data set validation data set and test data set so in the train loader uh, we will pass the in the data for the train loader we will pass the train data set in the data loader with the batch size of one and we will make the shuffle is equals to uh, true and in the validations and test we will make the shuffle is equals to false and obviously you can change the batch size as per your convenience so i have kept it two for a validation and test so we will uh, very quickly we will print uh, a few things like the number of training graphs number of validation graphs and number of test graphs and the number of features and the number of classes so in this protein protein interaction data set what we are going to deal with we have 20 training graphs and two validation graphs and two test graphs uh, with the number of features as 50 and of course the number of classes are 121 so this is a, a like benchmark data set and very uh, famous data set uh, which you will see has been used in various uh, i mean which has been used by the research community a lot so first we'll talk about the uh, understanding of inductive versus transductive learning very quickly and very short because all these parts has been covered in the classes in a very broader context so in the inductive learning so basically in the inductive settings we have uh, multiple graphs and we train on those multiple graphs and we test on a different graphs and in the transductive setting basically we have one large graph and in on that graph only we will basically perform the training and first we will mask some nodes and we will at the end we will test on those masked nodes so i have uh, written down 
<coughs> very uh, like a few differences here in the transductive setting and inductive setting. So uh, in the transductive, the entire model is available. The entire graph is available uh, during training. And the model learns to make predictions for a specific node in a single fixed graph. And in the transductive learning, uh, your model cannot generalize to unseen nodes or graphs. Okay. And in the inductive learning, the difference is the model learns to generalize to unseen nodes on the entirely new graph. And the training is done on the set of graphs and testing is performed on the different unseen graphs. And a bit about protein protein interaction data set, what we are going to use. Okay. So let's first uh, define uh, those two models, graph convolutional neural network and graph says. So in the GCN, uh, we have used here three layers of GCN. So GCN con, if you can see, we have already imported here from PyTorch Geometric. Similarly, uh, graph says as well. So here, uh, GCN con, con one is equals to GCN con, in channel and hidden channel. So this is a, a I mean, pretty standard implementation. Uh, so in the con2, con3. So basically, we have used three layers here. And in the forward functions, we are passing like the edge indexes and the x is basically your node features. Similarly, we have uh, implemented the graph says as well. So three layers of graph says I have used here. Okay. So the thing to note is like, uh, all the models have similar structure with three layers. This design basically allows them to capture multi-hop neighborhood information, which is crucial for protein-protein interaction task. And the main difference line, how they process and aggregate neighborhood information. So uh, GCN uses a simple neighborhood averaging approach while graphs is uses a sample and aggregation approach, which is particularly suitable for inductive task. So now we will see how we are going to perform the training and evaluation. So in order to train, we are defining a train function and similarly the test function. Okay, so uh, again, very standard implementation of training function. First, we will use model.train. Again, we will define the total loss as zero. And then we iterate through the uh, all the data points in the data loader. So in the train, in the case of training, you are going to pass the train loader. Okay, so we are going to iterate through all the data points. And <clears throat> we will first pass the data to the device, whether we are going to use GPU or CPU, and we'll set our optimizers gradients as a zero. And then here, finally, we will, our model will give us the output given these inputs. And the loss, whatever criteria we have defined, we are going to use. Similarly, and we'll do the back operation and optimizing step. Similarly, this is uh, this uh, function is for the test. And here we have defined the test and evaluate. Okay, so again, very standard implementation. So we will provide this uh, code notebook uh, in the course web page as well. So now let's initialize models. So when we are initializing models, so I'm initializing GCN model with GCN and graph says model as says. So this is the number of features, what uh, number of features our data set has. And we are using the hidden dimensions as 256. And at the end, um, we are uh, the, uh, the output, uh, uh, we have as the number number of classes. Okay, so similarly for the GCN and graphs is now we are going to define the optimizations and the criteria. So the criteria is binary cross entropy loss uh, with logic with uh, logits loss and the Adam optimizer with the same learning rate of 0 0.01 for both the cases. And here we will basically train the model and evaluate the model. Okay, so this train and evaluate function basically uh, trains and evaluates at the same time. Okay, so uh, I have already ran the code. So 
this is how basically training happens and at the end we are going to plot the results so if you will see uh, in the plot results function we are going to pass gcn results says results title and the y tables as well okay so uh, now let's uh, look at these results so you will see the training loss training loss uh, we have trained the model for 100 epochs and uh, for every epoch we have basically plotted the training loss as well okay so if you'll see the training loss in case of graph says is much lower than the gcn similarly the validation f1 score we have plotted here for the gcn and graph says so as you can see the validation f1 score for uh, graph says is uh, much higher compared to the gcn and similarly the test f1 score as well and the final test f1 score for gcn is 0.6551 and the graph says is 0.8278 so uh, the conclusion is that uh, because this protein protein interaction data set has different different uh, training graphs okay so uh, when we are going to train our model on the different different graphs and at the end we are going to test on different graphs so uh, it is very obvious that the inductive model should perform better and it is performing better in this case okay and at the end we are going to compare the total training time uh, taken by both these models so the gcn is taking basically 32.09 seconds whereas uh, graph size is taking 21.17 seconds okay so uh, this basically concludes uh, our implementation for the protein protein interaction data set uh, uh, using in case of both uh, we see in the performance of uh, performance in the transductive setting and the inductive setting as well now in the next part what we are going to see we are going to take the core data set which is basically uh, which is uh, one graph only and that is more suitable for the transductive learning setting okay so same thing uh, we are going to do here as well we are going to implement uh, these two models these uh, one for uh, graph convolutional network and one for says uh, graph says and in order to use the cora data set so from tor geometric dot data set you have to import a uh, platinoid and from platinoid you can uh, basically uh, uh, use the data set with the name cora okay so uh, we have set the seed as uh, uh, 50 for the reproducibility and uh, again the same code if you are uh, running your model on the gpu so it will select the uh, if CUDA is available then it will run on gpu else it will run on cpu okay so uh, this is this is basically we are printing a few things about the data set like the number of nodes number of edges number of classes and the number of node features okay so okay in this notebook i have provided the entire implementation like uh, all together so this is where we are going to define our uh, gcn model so if you'll see here i have used only two layers uh, of uh, gcn con and similarly two layers of graph size as well okay and this uh, this is our uh, gc uh, this is the class for gcn and this is the class for graph size so we have put all the things as uh, exactly same in order for us to compare to show the performance comparison between both the two models one is for the transductive setting and one is for the inductive setting and similarly the training function and the test function and the training and evaluation functions now here we are going to initialize the models so one is gcn and another is graph says here we have kept the number of hidden features as 16 and the output features will be the number of classes available in the data set and uh, we again we have used adam optimizers with the learning rate of 0 0.01 with the weight decay of 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 which is exactly same for both the cases and we are we are going to train in we are going to start training and evaluating our model so this is for gcn and this is what graph says okay and we are going to uh, see some results at the end 
So these are all the things what we have printed, like in the Quora dataset, the number of nodes in the graph of 2708, number of SS 10556, and there are total seven number of classes and the number of node pitches 1433. So this is how the training happens for GCN and graphs. And if you can see here, we have plotted the training accuracy uh, for 200 epochs this time we have trained on the validation accuracy and the test accuracy. So the final test accuracy of GCN is 0.8270 and the graph size is 0.8130. So the GCN in this case, which is uh, more suitable for the transductive setting is performing uh, better than graph size, which is basically for the inductive setting. And the total training time taken by the GCN is uh, 1.04 seconds where the graph size has taken 1.71 seconds for the 200 epochs. So uh, this, uh, this in this tutorial, basically we saw uh, how the model in the transductive setting and the inductive setting performs when we are provided with the data set, which are a kind of different. One data set is for the inductive setting, one data set is for the transductive setting. So this conclude uh, our tutorial on transductive versus inductive learnings for the node classification. And we have seen like how we can implement those models. So what you can do next is you can play around with different different data sets which are available on PyTorch Geometric and different other places as well. And you can validate yourself like for the uh, transductive data set, how the model is performing and for the inductive setting, how the model is performing. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. See you on the next tutorial.